When you open the menu, one of the first options is die, which I appreciate because playing this game all day has kind of made me want to. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Strife Hayes, and this is Worst MMO Ever, a series where I play the worst MMOs I can find so you don't have to. Drop a like on the video or sub to the channel for more MMO stuff. Ring the bell for all the future notifications. As usual, a massive thank you to all the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel going. More on how you can support at the end. For now, let's begin. Today we are playing Champions of Regnum. It's on Steam, it's awkward to pronounce, and it's free, so let's give it a go. The first thing you'll notice about Champions of Regnum is your security will identify it as a virus, but I'm here to make these dumb choices so you don't have to, so I'll deactivate my security for you and let it run, because I'm sure nothing bad has ever happened when someone did that. Get to character creation and... I mean, I don't think we need to customise this. I think he's Perfect. I'll go with Warrior, because I'm a basic white boy, and we set off and the game crashes! Great start, Champions of Regnum. Great start. The game asks for feedback in the crash report, so I diligently oblige and provide a detailed dossier. Reload and change some settings so it launches in windowed mode, hopefully prevent another crash. The game loads and... Right... I mean, it's a bold design move to create a game with no textures but you've got to respect people trying new things. Look, I know this is obviously a problem, my end, the game has launched wrong, but it's funnier to just assume this is how the game is meant to look, so we're going to play like this. WASD movement, right click also moves, but we'll look at that later because there's issues. Right click and left click both interact with things, from NPCs to objects to enemies, but there is delay on all clicks. It's noticeable and it gets annoying. Talk to the opening NPC, and then this girl on the docks, she asks me to check these boxes, so I do that. They contain goblins. I attack one, and he hits me so hard, the game crashes. Again, that's two crashes in five minutes. That's a quit moment for most people. Reload again, fight the goblin again, and die. Die to the tutorial enemy, because my sword got unequipped during the crash, and I'm being attacked and can't retaliate with no weapon. Great start game, buttery smooth. I can see I've got some skills on the hotbar, so I try and use them, but only one of them actually applies to the sword weapon. I'm guessing every character starts with a different weapon and every player just gets a generic hotbar setup because it's easier than giving a specific hotbar based on class or weapon choice. Oh, what do you think pressing tab does? That's right. It turns off the UI. Not enemy target, not inventory. Turn off the UI. I'm glad that that incredibly important process has been given to one of the most important buttons on the keyboard. Oh, quick note, auto attack hits every few seconds, but using a skill doesn't immediately use the skill, it actually replaces your next auto attack, it doesn't add the skill on top of the background auto attack rhythm, it just replaces your next attack with that. And then there's a global cooldown which is slightly longer than an attack cycle, meaning using a skill will always have to be followed by a regular auto attack and then using another skill, and it makes combat feel really clunky. I level up and get told my stats have increased. I can't choose where the stat points go. I was able to assign points at the character creation screen, but not during level ups. Get told to speak to Rastan, open the world map to find him, and the world map's quite nice. You can zoom in all the way and then zoom out all the way. Scrolls nicely, quests you're on are all highlighted. It's a well-made system here. Nothing to complain about. Yet. One issue with these steps, the hitboxes are a little bit off. I think instead of angling the side rail to be smooth and match the in-game graphics, they've just built it out of blocks, so you can just walk into the air and stand here. This is the opening area. This is your first impression. Did you not think anyone was going to jump onto this side? Have you not played an MMO before? You've shown that you're not bothered about your graphical and physical consistency in the world. Not a super strong opening game. This NPC guard tells me to go and kill some wolves, so I go and do that. The game's quest list is pretty basic, but functional. Quest giver, receiver, objectives, and optional map location are shown. Does exactly what it says on the tin. It's not fancy, but it works. Kill five wolves and then report to a guard called Bread. Now, this village is actually okay. Ambience is okay. Buildings look okay. NPC milling around looks okay. Okay, the whole village just screams okay. 
There's a warrior trainer who starts a warrior class quest line. So let's do this. Thankfully, the minimap icons have quest based tooltips whenever you cursor over them. So navigation is at least simple. I was never unsure of where to go for any given quest. Now we get a combat training section against some dummies and we're told the color of the enemy's name shows their challenge rating compared to us. I like this. It's explaining an in-game feature, but why is it explaining it? after we've already had to do combat multiple times. I've already died to a goblin. I've already killed wolves. Why are you giving me the tutorial that I will need for a thing after I've done the thing? Next few quests are just passing a load of notes back and forth and I finally get a mount which cannot jump. I know your mount not being able to jump isn't exactly a game-breaking thing, but it was super disappointing to sit on this cool-looking wolf, press spacebar, and just have nothing happen. The next quest sends me to a place called Squid Island. I need to talk to a transporter to be sent there, and it's an island with three landmasses and towers owned by factions, and this is a PvP map, isn't it? An early game quest involves going to do PvP. Well, I wander around and get told yes, go and stand by that tower. So I do. And I get piled and ganked by higher level enemies or players, I don't know. And I die. And I respawn at the very start. And is this your design game? Does the opening of the game require you to go and die in PvP? Because look, I finished the quest. Why would you throw a fresh player into high level PvP that isn't scaled? I've only just done the combat tutorial. I'm not ready for PvP. This is what happens when you have a load of disjointed quests and no actual central narrative, no adventure through line to your early experience, or you allow the player to wander off and do way harder stuff than they're ready for. It ends up feeling really disjointed, and so far there's a really odd feeling of disconnect between me and the game. Like I'm playing a copy of a copy of a copy. I'll explain it better as I'm able to refine how I feel throughout this video. Get asked to go and check on a local guard, and look, a big button called Item Mall. Let's click it and explore the shop. Okay, so, wow, there's pay to win, and then there's this. Experience boosters, gold boosters, straight up level boosting. If anyone ever has the audacity to tell you Champions of Regnum isn't pay to win, just show them the cash shop. Just broadly gesture at literally everything in this shop. I wonder what the most expensive thing I can find is. Mounts are always expensive, so I look into there and, oh, look, this mount is 30,000 Zimmerin, the premium currency that they use. How would I buy 30,000? Well, I try, and that is incredibly scummy. The prices are not shown. The only way you can see the prices is by clicking buy and having it take you to the actual transaction screen. Now, I'm playing on Steam, so Steam double checks any purchases I make, but Imagine this being a launcher. Imagine if you could link your credit card and it would just take it whenever you click buy. Well, a thousand currency is one pound, so 30,000 is basically 30 quid. That's close to $50. $50 for a mount. I still can't get over how unfriendly the whole don't show the real cost in the game is. That is incredibly predatory design. That is hostile toward the player. I'd quit the game out of principle as soon as I saw that. You can buy a 500% experience boost for one hour for £9. But look, a level 60 boost scroll, which also comes with 5 million gold, is 99,000 Zimmerin. £99. That's $133. You can pay the best part of £100 or $133 to boost a character and get 5 million gold. Wow. You can also buy items that let you access the auction house, crafting tables, mailbox, or shop from anywhere. Or premium crafting items, or better mounts. Oh look, this shop is the prime example of exactly what pay to win looks like. I carry on with the quest, I find the guard, he's been killed. Oh dear, we report this and get told, oh no, this is awful, go and kill five goblins to avenge him. So we go and do that. While killing, my health drops low and my only healing potion doesn't actually heal me. It increases the healing I get from resting. So it's a win, fight and then rest type of game. Reminds me of Tale of Toast. So far, this feels like an imitation of an MMO. Like it's trying to copy what it assumes an MMO is. Character creation, maps, quests, fights, they're all there, but it feels distant. It feels hollow, like there's nothing behind the eyes. This game feels like a robot imitating a human. There's no human warmth or empathy or passion in any of the systems. It feels empty. wonder how many people are adventuring with me on Steam right now. 
18. Quite the drop from the 785 player peak. Kill the goblins, report back and get told, good job, go and kill four skeletons. I am sensing a pattern here. Oh, also just noticed my profile picture to the top left, it's animated. It doesn't need to be animated because it looks horrifying. With the combat done, we are sent to look for a fisherman. Okay, so far, all of my quests have been a variation on go and talk to this NPC because we don't know where they are, and then the NPC needing me to kill things. I am betting this fisherman needs stuff killed. Alright, let's just discuss the right-click movement, because it is, for want of a more eloquent phrase, shit. Right-clicking moves you, but it also swings the camera, and the camera swing and the character model are not synced up, and i figured out why this is. Your character does not always have to be facing the direction of the camera, and when you right-click to move, your character will spin and begin to move where you've clicked. The camera will then spin the same amount that the character spun, which means if the camera were behind the character model from the start of the movement, it would match up fine. But if the character wasn't directly behind your character to begin with, it will still spin the same amount and still not match up, and it looks awful. There is a lot of issues with the camera and the movement. Sometimes you will just stop for no reason, even though you're still holding down a movement key. Sometimes the camera just drifts. Sometimes it snaps. It's just a bad camera system. Get to the fisherman and yeah, he needs five things killed. Surprise, surprise. Nothing interesting happens while I am doing this. Have a chat to Bron. He needs something from the PvP island. So you know what? No, Bron, I'm not going back there again. Sorry, it's unbalanced. But hey, this guard has a quest for me and... Are you taking the piss? Go and look for another NPC and see how they are. Is every quest, hey, someone's gone missing, go and find them? You know what this questing feels like? You ever been to a club with a load of mates when you were teenagers and someone wandered off and instead of enjoying the night, you all spend a few hours trying to find them so the squad can be together again. And when you finally find them, someone else has wandered off. You know that frustrating feeling of spending the entire time trying to find your mates instead of actually having fun with them? That's how questing in this game feels. The more I play, the more the uncanny valley feeling grows. Champions of Regnum feels like a game designed by a really competent AI. There's no way to objectively understand this without playing it, but I wouldn't wish that on you, so I'll try my best. Imagine looking at a beautiful painting that was painted by a robot programmed to paint this exact picture. And while the painting is competent and beautiful, it's also heartless. It's acceptable, but there's a void where an artist's tortured soul would go. The whole experience is missing something, and I think, as dumb as this sounds, it's love. I know that sounds cheesy, but this feels like a game made without love. It's also a game made without water physics, and I slide off this cliff through the water, and die. Which takes me right back to the start, god damn it. Gather some firewood. The camera jerks a little every time I click on this object. Don't know why. Find the guard alive, take his report to the next village, get told on my way to the village I should kill three wolves. Oh my god, the game cannot decide if I need to do a go talk to someone quest or a go kill X quest, so it's just combined them. Issue with mounted combat. It isn't there. You can be attacked while mounted, but you cannot retaliate. And being attacked, or clicking attack, doesn't dismount you. You need to manually dismount, meaning the enemy can get a few free hits in on you while you are clicking to dismount. This cub model looks incredibly dumb. Baby versions of things look different to the adult versions of things. You can't just shrink the adult model and be all, yeah, that's a baby. This new village brings up another wave of note passing, and then we're sent to a smuggler camp to see what they're up to. Oh, quick design suggestion for the map. If you're in a snow zone with a mostly white map, don't have the quest area highlight be a gentle yellow, because it looks like piss. Chat to the smugglers, they're an amicable bunch and say everything is above board. I check the ledger, then this giant container of gems and something alive in this box that were clearly not on the ledger. But when I report this to the mayor, I'm told it's probably a government operation and we should leave them alone if we want to keep getting funding. Well, isn't that the most realistic quest in any game ever? A village mayor saying drop the investigation because it might be high-level government stuff. And even though it's probably illegal, I don't want to damage my chance of getting what's owed to me. You probably weren't going for scathing social commentary there, game, but that's exactly what you got. Get told to deal with a werewolf, so off we go to sneak into its den. This game feels like a knockoff of a knockoff. You know in school when you're given photocopied worksheets and eventually photocopies of the photocopies and the quality just goes way down every time? This game feels like that. 
Wonder what the game's subreddit looks like. 65 people in total, and the last post was five months ago. Yeah, this game's pretty dead. While I'm bounding across this emotionless land, let's have a read of some reviews. Open game MMORPG with the best realm vs realm vs realm system you will ever see in MMORPG games. I can run around naked without getting arrested, plus one. I'm a Linux gamer, so this game caught my eye as a solid MMO for Linux. On a personal note, if you're a Linux user and this is the quality of MMO you have, I'm really, really sorry for you. Rather cliche and average MMORPG with plenty of grinding and simple combat. Only real interesting thing that sets it apart, not saying that this is an original idea, is the realm versus realm combat. Sweet game, but after 100 years gets boring XD, that's just sad. 2,921.6 hours played. 10 out of 10. The main function works perfectly. The uninstall button. Before posting a comment, I make it clear. I have less than 50 hours of game only in the Steam and play it a very long time. The game is fun, but has many bugs and nothing, absolutely nothing is free in this game. I spent a lot of money in the game because I liked it, but I do not recommend it just because nothing is free, i.e. it is just another pay to win game. You can't heal with potions without paying, come on. I know the game is free of charge, but some free games doesn't need such dirty way to win money. You friggin have to sit and wait between almost every fights for the first levels, between every fights. I would recommend this game because it is crap. Arrive at the werewolf lair, need to drink the invisibility potion so you can sneak past the guards. So I do, and... Wow. That's really disappointing. It doesn't even change your model. You just are now invisible. It says so in the box. You could have used a wireframe model, a transparency filter. You could have had the character hold up a newspaper with eye holes cut out and just sneak past the enemies. You didn't even do anything. Head back to town, buy some new combat skills, level up again and marvel at this bear floating in midair. I knew we'd have terrain mesh problems when I found the blocky staircase earlier, but I didn't realise it would be quite this bad throughout the game. Sometimes you need to talk to an NPC twice for the quest dialogue to happen. That's just poor programming. And this NPC walks off in the middle of me reading the text and it closes the box. NPC dialogue boxes being open? is a distance-based thing, and the NPC can just wander off, ending your conversation. Kill some Aquantis leaders, then get a good look at their gorgeous faces. This game reminds me of a PlayStation 2 D-Make parody of MMO design. Gotta kill a skeleton. Sometimes combat just doesn't. You can left-click, right-click, use an ability, your character just decides, nah, I don't feel like fighting today. Not gonna do it. Kill some ghost bodyguards, then give the ghost an amulet we found. He's not at rest, he's sort of a restless ghost, and we've used an amulet in a way that lets us speak to the ghost. Kind of a ghost speak amulet, and now the restless ghost has been saved. Original quest design, right there. Good job, game. Head back to the village to report all of this. Champions of Regnum is not an adventure. It's a tedious, soulless experience with long travel times between super boring combat encounters. It is a paint-by-numbers MMO. You ever seen those robot bartenders that mix drinks perfectly and they're fun to watch once, but then you go to an actual bar and realise the energy and ambience of live people making you a drink is just much more human and engaging. This game is the robot bartender. I've lost count of how many AI analogies I've used so far, so I'll try and make sure to get Blade Runner and iRobot in there somewhere. Look at this. You fall from a tiny drop, and this dismounts you, hurts you, locks you in place, and casts the status injury. You can see it in the chat box. Cast injury. Travel itself is not an adventure. Travel is an aspect involved in adventure, and if you're going to make the travel needlessly long and so awkward that a player gets stunned and harmed from a tiny drop, the travel is not adventurous in itself, so don't be surprised when players quit. Honestly, MMORPG players deserve better than this. Log out for lunch, log back in, and when you do, you get two really loud, unidentifiable sounds. Just have a listen. I'm sure this has happened in an MMORPG I've played on this series before. Why do you get really loud random sounds playing when you return to the game?
When you hit level 10, crafting unlocks. And I've just hit level 10, so let's go and craft. You need to unlock crafting from a main city, and that looks to be south, so let's go. But I did Google Champions of Regnum Crafting to make sure it was that city, and this forum post assures me it's a complete waste of time, so... My hopes aren't too high for this being good. To unlock crafting, you talk to the crafter and you craft a basic recipe. The crafting window is transparent for some reason. Recipes are on the left, progress is on the right. Click to accept the item in the bottom right. It is very formulaic, very utilitarian. We then get sent to collect some resources from the mountains close by. So I head over and there isn't a mining animation for mining. You just bend down and pick the whole rock up. I suppose that's a handy time saver if you're in a dangerous place and don't want to mine by the enemy. Just take the whole lump of rock back with you. The first two items you can craft are a bit of bone and some bronze, and then you would assume that you can use those items to do something, but no, you can do absolutely nothing with them. You need more crafting experience to unlock more recipes, and crafting a bit of bone gives you one experience. Now, I could gather more items, but I don't like the inventory layout. I'm not a huge fan. It's a list of items in a vertical cascading style with various tabs, and you can't move the inventory box around. In fact, you can't change any of the UI. It's static. It's all static. Your only choice is on or off. The music in the towns is really epic and battle-ready, but it doesn't fit at all. There's nothing happening in this town. I am crafting, but I can feel myself tensing up ready for a fight. It's aggressive drum beats and this hyper fight-based ambience on repeat, and it does not make town feel safe, even though it is. Which is ironic, because the dangerous bits outside of town, full of enemies, have this lovely peaceful background music. The class trainer mentions power sets, and we're told we need to go and buy them from the cash shops. That's even more pay-to-win mechanics. I even Google power sets, and I discover this game's wiki is absolutely useless. For my entire playtime, there's something not quite right. Something lurking at the back of my mind, screaming, this is wrong, this doesn't fit. It's like Deckard picking up the origami, or Truman when he realises he's being watched. I feel like I'm looking at one of those AI art paintings that looks fine at first glance, but when you actually look deeper, you realise it's a complete mess of shapes and colours and there's nothing identifiable about it. This game doesn't work. Remember that really awkward scene in iRobot where Will Smith advertises the Converse shoes he's wearing and it's clearly just a really shoehorned in advert for Converse and it kills the whole flow and you all remember it as being really stupid. This game feels like that scene. I get told to go and kill eight ferrets, and this is where combat really starts to grind. I can take down one or two before needing a rest, and while my combat skills do help the combat go quicker, they don't actually make it any more fun. The only saving grace is when I open the menu and see there's a big red button labelled Die, and I think you know the game is bad when that's the first button you've actually really wanted to click on. Champions of Regnum is similar to a rather advanced AI's close approximation of what a human might enjoy if that human were an MMORPG fan. The general design is there. The systems that make up a good game are all present. They're just presented without any real joy or passion behind them. The combat is clunky. The physical world is mostly built well with terrible clipping above multiple surfaces and the crafting is both level-gated and pointless, which is an impressively bad combination. The game plays like an MMORPG should play, but the whole experience feels deeply wrong, like talking to a suitably advanced AI with a human-looking face that can't quite pass the Turing test. So to end the review, I guess that's the best rating. A surface-level approximation of an MMORPG lacking the human element elements of love, care, or personality. Out of 10. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you again to the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel alive. You can support from only £1 a month. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter, Discord, or the new second channel, Josh Strife Plays, where I'll be replaying classic video games voted on by you. And as always, have a great day.